Okay, in this video we're going to talk about interfaces in C Sharp. Uh, now, interfaces is another one of those concepts that can be kind of confusing, but um, luckily interfaces are very object-oriented and very analogous to real-world things that we will discuss. And it, if you understand those things, it makes it much easier to understand what an interface is. So, first of all, uh, let's look at the definition of what an interface is. If you go to the dictionary, an interface is a common boundary or interconnection between systems, equipment, concepts, or human beings. So the basic idea is it is an interconnection that allows two things to interact, like a human being to communicate with a device or something like that. And a great example is your computer. You've got a computer monitor, you've got a keyboard, you've got a mouse, and those things form what's called a human machine interface or HMI. They allow a human to interact and communicate with a computer because, you know, most of us can't speak in ones and zeros and can't directly access the hardware of your computer. So we need, we need a monitor, we need a, a mouse click, and we need keyboard presses to communicate in our language into the computer language. So that is an interface between a human and a box. Now, uh, another good example of a uh, interface is shown in our, our first video, which talks about some basic concepts with software development. And we talk about objects. And in particular, we look at a car as an object. And in this case, the car has a primary function, and that is driving you places, OK? To do that, it needs some interfaces. And these are devices that interface between the driver and the internal uh, mechanics of the car because the human can't directly access them. He or she needs these devices to interface so that he can easily um, control the car and tell it what to do. We've got a steering wheel, which has an interface that tells the car how to drive or what direction. We have a gas pedal, which causes the car to accelerate, and we have a brake, which causes the car to slow down. Each of these are interfaces between a human and a box, which we can't directly access. Now, <clears throat> the other concept is that if you take this car and look at the general class of vehicle that it belongs to, you will notice that there are other vehicles that also require these exact same interfaces, steering, gas, and brake. A big rig truck requires steering, gas, and brake in order to drive. A motorcycle requires steering, gas, and brake in order for it to drive. So all of these objects in this class of vehicle and others like ATVs or whatever, all need steering, gas, and brake in order to function. So they all have a common requirement for a particular interface or set of interfaces, okay? All vehicles, if you have a vehicle, it must have steering, gas, and brake, okay? So an interface is or can exist across multiple types of objects. So that, those, those external, those inputs, assist the, the object, either the car, the truck, or motorcycle, to do its job. Now, inside the car, truck, or motorcycle, they take these inputs through the interface and do their driving in different ways. For example, this car might have a hydraulic brake system, this truck will have a pneumatic brake system, and this motorcycle might have a mechanical brake system. Okay, so they all have identical interface to the external wor world to do steering, gas, and brake, but they implement those differently, okay? So again, we've got a human has interfaces to the object, and those objects allow the human to, to control the object. Now, of course, as I said before, the interface implementations can vary depending on the, the type of object in the class. So for example, for an accelerator, the car has a gas pedal. You put your foot on it and it accelerates. But a motorcycle has, 
has a twist grip, a throttle, on the handlebar that you twist with your hand to make the motorcycle uh, accelerate. For steering, a car has a steering wheel, but a motorcycle has handlebars that you turn. So they all have accelerator and steering, but they do it a little bit differently. They have different implementations. They have different methods of implementing those interfaces, okay? Now, there are other interfaces in a uh, vehicle, like a car. You've got a transmission, which allows the driver to change gears, either manual or automatic. You've got a speedometer, which gives information back to the driver. Headlight controls allow the driver to uh, turn on and off the lights, fuel gauge, alarm panel. So there are numerous other interfaces that the object has. Uh, but we're just working with the, um, the, the primary interfaces of um, fuel, gas, and brake. So again, the, the basic concept here is treating uh, a car, in this case, as an object. And it has internal functions or methods that it performs, in this case, driving. And it has properties. And it accepts inputs and gives outputs. Okay, so you're breaking something down in the object-oriented view as a simple object with a function, properties, inputs, and outputs. And an interface is just an extension of that where the object interfaces to the external world to those inputs and outputs. And the inputs can be steering wheel, gas, and brake, and outputs are something like a speedometer, but they go through an interface. Now what we'll do is we will jump into Visual Studio and we will see how to code an interface in C Sharp. Okay, so now we started up Visual Studio and C Sharp. I've uh, loaded up a simple console application and I named it Interfaces Demo. Now what we're going to do here is let's make believe we are writing some code to do a video game that, that is a racing game or a, a driving simulator. And this is going to simulate different type, driving different types of vehicles. So the user can select either a car or a truck or a motorcycle or an ATV or something and drive it and use inputs from a steering wheel or a joystick or whatever uh, and actually simulate driving that vehicle. So we said in the, um, we said previously that any vehicle needs to have three methods or three functions that it does in order to do its driving chore. Those are steering, gas or accelerator and brake. So what we can do is we can define an interface that is inherited by any vehicle class that we generate. And what that interface will do is say, if you are a vehicle, you must have as a minimum steering, gas or accelerator and brake. You must have three methods inside your class to do those three functions or else you're not a vehicle. So how do we do that? Well, we'll go outside the class and there is a code snippet interface and let's name it I vehicle controls. Okay, so we have just defined an interface called vehicle controls and typically you put a capital I in front of the name so you can quickly identify it as an interface. Now inside of this we have to define the methods that we are saying all vehicles using this interface must have these methods. So what we can do is say void steering and that defines the method, that's what defines one of the methods. Void accelerator. That defines the other method. Void brake. Okay, so now we have just defined an interface. And any vehicle that uses this interface, what we're saying is they must have a method to do steering, accelerator, and brake. Now, what's inside those methods is somewhat irrelevant, but we're just, we're just requiring anybody who uses this to have those methods and perform those functions or else they're not a vehicle. Now, we also know that if we're gonna have a method that does steering, it's going to have to take an input, 
which is the position of the steering wheel. So let's say double uh, steering input. And we're going to send that a value into this method when we run it to um, take the input and calculate where the wheels go. And we'll do the same for the accelerator, double ACC input, accelerator input, and brake, double brake input. Okay, so now we're defining three methods that must be in all vehicles, and they each take a double of a different quantity. One's the input from the steering wheel, one's from the accelerator, one's from the brake. Okay, so now we have to find an interface. Notice there's no access modifiers, it's just interface, the name of the interface, and the list of the three, in this case, the three methods that must be included in all of the um, classes that use this. So now let's define a car class. Public class car. And in order, public, in order for this class to use this interface, we put a colon and we will we'll call it by its name, vehicle controls. And then we now have defined a class that, is in, that inherits the vehicle controls interface. So this says that this class of car must have three methods inside of it for doing steering, accelerator, and brake, and, they, and each of them takes a double. Now, you'll immediately see that this has got a squiggly line under it, and it says car does not implement the in interface member steering or accelerator or brake. It doesn't implement any of these. So now what we need to do is set up methods void, and we'll say steering, and we can just actually copy this. Okay, so now we have put in a steering, a steering method. We can copy and paste. And we can name this accelerator. And we can paste and name this brake. And now suddenly you can see that the squiggly line goes away because now it's happy. We've inherited this interface and we have implemented those three methods. They're empty, but they have been implemented. Okay. So we have, we have fulfilled the contract that says if you're going to use the interface, you better make some methods internally to do that. Okay? So keep in mind you can also, in an interface, you can also set up, for example, properties. Okay? So we can use a code snippet, and we can set up a property uh, inside this interface that we can use. And, and keep in mind that this property can't have an access modifier. Um, so let's say we want a property of bool, and we'll call it is electronic ignition. Okay, so we can set a property in this interface to tell if the interface is an electronic ignition or is it hydraulic brakes or whatever. So not only methods, but you can also define properties and you could also define events. But for this case, we're just going to, um, we're just going to do the methods. Now, by the way, you can see that we've defined a property, but we, again, we get the squiggly line because we didn't implement that here in this class. So um, we'll get rid of that and just use the uh, methods. Okay, so now we're happy. We've got a class car that does what it needs to do. So 
Um, what this method will do, will have a lot of code behind it that will turn based on steering wheel input, input, okay? And an accelerator will uh, increase engine speed based on accelerator position. Okay. And brake will slow down the car. All right, so we're taking steering input and we do a whole bunch of methodology here to um, actually um, steer the wheels or accelerate the car or slow it down. So basically, interfaces are kind of a compile time check to make sure that a class that has said it will inherit this interface and use those methods, it makes sure that it actually does that. Okay, if not, you'll get squiggly lines. So I hope this has helped uh, to clarify the concept behind interfaces. They're very nice object-oriented uh, functionality in .NET. So anyway, take care and have a good day.